Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to the Angry Cast. Here is a tip for all you designers out there if you want to delve into the world of uh, shirt design like I have over the past couple of years, actually a decade. Um, I just put out a design, and you know, to give you a little background, we're going to make this a little bit more of a, a talking tutorial. Hey, you got to hear the life story before I give you the recipe to grandma's barbecue sauce. Just letting you know. Um, I am a been playing uh, Evo Land 2, and it has an entire section devoted to this thing called a game of cards, which is like an, an RPG tabletop, whatever you want to call it, card deck game where you throw out cards and you play against somebody else. Uh, Elder Scrolls Legends, I think, has the same idea. There's a Hearthstone, I think, is another one. There's a bunch of these types of games. It's like Magic the Gathering on acid uh, for uh, PC and for, you know, console game, video game players. But I've been playing that for like nonstop for the past few days to, to collect all of the cards in the game. And it's been on my brain. And then also, also recently, um, we have a senior dog in our family. And sometimes she needs a little assistance going outside. So I have to sometimes go in while she's asleep or waking up in the morning and put her harness and everything on her, pick her up and take her outside so she can stand outside and go. She can't make it all the way on her own with her bladder. So more information you needed to know, but still. Anyways, the other day I was going in to do all that and I putting all of her stuff on her. I forgot my shoes and I turned around and I headed back out of the bedroom and I kicked the side of the door with the back, with the last two toes on my right foot and I thought I broke them. I really did. I thought I broke them hard. They hurt like hell and uh, they really, really bothered me for like the next few days. But it got me to thinking those two things sort of, you know, having that game of cards on my brain and the pain of my toe on my brain, uh, I had an epiphany. Why not make an RPG card shirt design or sticker design or something like that along the lines of, say, the most, you know, a banal adulting moment you ever have where you step on like a Lego in the dark room when you're, you know, your kid. Uh, <laughs> so I, I came up with the RPG, the brick card. Uh, as you can see here, this is that uh, design. Uh, as you can see, it's got, you know, it's got attack points of 100, it's got a defense of 100, it's a, you know, this little thing here. It's got health, it's got stealth, it's the brick. It tells you that it's going to take, an enemy will take 50 points more damage for 5 seconds if you place it on carpet. Again, this is funny to probably be maybe me and about 5 people in the world, but I thought it would be kind of cool. And this is a little mousetrap to sort of recognize that this is a trap card. Um, but it's, you know, it's got this nice little background, this uh, medieval type of background on it, the shadows and everything else. And I, you know, I sell it in my stores and I just put it out there. So, if, hey, if you want to go buy one, buy a sticker or anything like that, the description will have all the links to everything I, I do. Um, but also, even though I probably will not, you know, this won't be my million dollar idea. This won't be something that's going to make me be able to retire from a nine to five job because I put out this one design. But it got me to thinking that I thought, you yeah, know, I do this because I'm, I like to be creative, I like to create art, I like to do fun things and, and, and mix culture, pop culture references together. And what has happened is over the last 11 years of, of doing this kind of stuff is I've gotten better at it. I put out some really, really, really bad designs early on and I was making money off them and that's the sad thing is that I just threw out stuff just to get it out there and I sold them. You know, two bucks, five bucks a shirt, whatever. I was making money, good money for the first few years of the recession back between 2009 and 2012. Uh, and then, you know, everything started to slow down and I realized that I had to do quality over quantity and I started to really work on my craft. And I think I really got there uh, in, in terms of, of um, my ability to, to create depth and texture with this right here. This, this, this is my most favorite thing about this design, this little jewel uh, kind of idea that has the health uh, thing. And it's supposed to look like it's a 3D little bit like of a marble sticking out of the card. It's got a little bit of like a hump to it. It's got some this reflective light uh, you know, on it and it's got some shadow to it. And it's got like this deep color, this, this sort of a, a smoky look to it. And I thought this is really good because I have never been able to do stuff like this. I could have put the same design out there with just a flat color and probably been like okay with it five or six years ago. But now I've started to want to, to really hone my craft as a digital artist and I've had no training whatsoever. So this is just me farting around for hours on end over the years and coming up with stuff. And this is what I've come up with. And I want to show you how to get this same kind of a look because it's not that hard. 
these types of things, if I were to look at them and think, how could I recreate that? I would think of it as being something impossible for me five years ago to have figured out. But I can do it today, and I'm going to show you in, in just some quick, easy steps. And I know I'm taking a long time to talk about this, but I want to get all the information out there that you, you, know, you can have to understand the process and how I've grown as a digital artist and how you can too if you really want to do these types of things. Uh, the main thing to understand is we are using, of course, Paint.net. Now, Paint.net is a free program if you've never seen me use it before or you've never heard of it. It's like GIMP or anything like that. Like that. It's, it's a lot like Photoshop, and then it has a lot of... Uh, effects and stuff that you can do with it but it's also free so you know you are getting what you pay for but paint.net has a great big wide community of developers who have put out their own plugins for effects on stuff and I've used lots of them um, there's there's great stuff like stripping the primary color from like if you have a black and white photo and you just want the outline you take out the white or um, outlining or the, the uh, some effects like making things from circle like, you know straight up and down to, like distort them to the polar axis I've used that a lot for say uh, anything I have like a starburst effect on it but this here this this jewel this big circle right there I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick so let's go to a blank canvas if you will and we're gonna do this in layers and that's the other great thing about paint.net is you don't have to just like Paint, MS Paint, you have one flat layer and that's it. You can't do transparencies. In Paint.net, you can have transparency. You can have an, a layer that is like nothing. The background can be empty and you can add levels, layers to it and then add elements. And each element is going to be its own little layer in this design. So first we have the background itself, which is just this white canvas. Then we have uh, what you would think would be the outer circle first, but no, we're going to do the outer background circle and then the shadow for the um, circle for the gem. Then we're going to have this inner color for the background of the, the inner circle, which then comes up here, which I should have named this inner circle. And I highly suggest that if you are working with layers, you name your layers accordingly because uh, th this card, this, this design right here, was probably about 30 layers, different layers. Each element was its own little layer. And then you combine them or you move them up and down depending on how you want the, the effects to sit on top of each other. Uh, so that we have the inner circle and then we have this inner circle shadow which will this is the real kicker to this thing and this layer 10 is where I'm going to show you how to do that inner circle shadow then we have our text and then we have highlights for that inner circle so let's take a look at everything we want to do so the first thing we really want to do is we're going to skip the out the background layer and we're going to do the outer circle and here we can see the outer circle as it is that's basically what's the shapes key which allows us to pick different shapes like so, and then we just have our color, which would be our primary color is black, and our background color is our secondary color is, is empty right now because we want to use that to show you the, the the shadow later on. But this here, all you gotta do on this outer circle is just make a circle. You know, that's all you gotta do. Boom. And you can do it as an outline, you can do it as a filled shape, you can do it as a you know your secondary color as an outline as uh, with the filled shape. Fairly simple. And what I did was I took this out to the point where I can see all of the four corners or the cardinal directions of the circle equidistant from the center because I want to have this thing be centered in the page so everything looks uniform and that is basically saying that I have a 12 by 12 canvas 2400 pixels at a 200 resolution and which is really good for shirt designs I think at least that's the minimum or at least the recommended but I would take this thing to the middle right there to the number six middle and then I would find the six here and I would take it down to there and then I would just keep working this thing until I got it to where I want it and then that's my circle so let's get rid of that we don't need that anymore just delete 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 layer visibility get rid of it now the next thing we're gonna do is that background now the reason I say we do the background second even though it's our layer that's that's right above it is because we want this layer to exist beyond the border of the circle so that we don't have any edging showing from below. And all we've done here is taken our magic wand tool into the outer circle, take take it to this way. Now I have a tolerance level that as you can see here it, it begins to show okay the white space and then we've now bled into where it's not quite dark but it's you know it's into the black circle. We want to have it extend beyond. We want this out, this circle outline to exist on top of, lay it flat down on top of that circle, that, that color that we're going to put in. Um, the basic, the easiest thing to do here, 
if you haven't done it before, is to either create another circle inside of there and just drag the edges past it. You don't have to be perfect this, you know, this time. We just flick beyond there. And we can, and like I say, if I actually pick this color, you can see here, we'll just go vip and exists there. We're just taking it beyond that level so that it sits nice and snugly underneath the outside of that circle, the inside of that circle and doesn't show through. And that's all we, and then we just decided we've just picked the color we want. Now I, I always do, do black and whites first. So this one here would be completely white and then I would add color later and how I would add color later and let's uh, I can show you how that's gonna be uh, one second so let's say that's black here and we're gonna invert that color and then we want to just say okay how what color do I want it to be I want it to be sort of a copish yellowish beige color so we're gonna go into our adjustments and do color balance and we're gonna pick it to about a yellow of some sort and then and as you can see, the color balance always covers like the cyan, magenta, the yellows, and the red, green, blue, like your, your CMYK and your RGB uh, ideas. You can slide these back and forth, make it as, you know, deep and blue. I can tell you right now that if I have a black, um, uh, if I have a black screen and I do the adjustments and the color balance red three times, it will be fully red. You don't have to do any other, this, you know, this doesn't have to be there. Just do red three times and you'll have the, the the basic red color, which is, if you look at it, FF0000. That's the hex, hexadecimal color um, code. 00FF00 is green, I think, and 0000FF is blue. All computer code. Learned that back in HTML when I was you know doing web pages back in the 90s. Uh, so let's take that back to black, and then, of course, we're going to get our red color. Boom. All right, we got our red color. Let's say that's the color we want. And see how it exists on the entire canvas. And then we have the outer circle. Here's the outer circle. We take that up the tolerance to a good amount. That doesn't take the entire screen, but just that much. And then we can see it, it bleeds over. And then we go back to our other layer. Now we have everything but the circle and the inside that circle. And then we just say, I want to cut that. So Control X or uh, Edit cut which is control X now we have that circle as exists just inside of it okay so that's that's how you know that's how you get that color and I'm going to get rid of that because we don't want to have that uh, affect us okay that covers the backgrounds and then we have the uh, the in, the inner circle now the next color we see here is red which is our as you can see our color that exists behind and it, you can see how choppy it is and how jagged it is well that's because I have an inner circle that I made the exact same way as the outer circle just smaller slightly smaller to give us this sort of uh, inner circle outer circle two different color tone and I apologize my mouse scroll wheel does not want to get work with me here uh, like I said we want to keep the inner the, the background color below the outline so that it covers bleeds over that edge so we don't have any uh, missing pixels then we want to add in our text which is this is just Times New Roman text, and I, I have gone through and took it, taken my magic wand, and on the text highlight each one, circle, lasso, however you want to call it, individually, and made sure that it exists right smack dab into, you know, as close as it can be for the way the um, text lined up on that. If I made it a couple pixel, like a couple points different. Uh, size it might have lined up better but that's good enough for me oh my gosh this stupid thing let's just zoom out <laughs> zoom out the window there we go so there you go that takes care of that and then we have highlights and we have the shadows this is if I were to do a 2d image flat no depth no texture nothing at all this is how it would look on that card but I want to make it look like this closest to this as I can so First thing we do is this is a this is not a circle. It doesn't exist in a 2D. It exists in a 2D space, but we're trying to represent three dimensions. So now we have all of our layers here. Let's go down and let's take this shadow. And all I did was I took this inner background circle and I duplicated here, duplicate that layer, and that just makes the same layer twice. And now you can manipulate that same exact layer and make it do something different. 
So I take that inner circle background color and then I zeroed out the color itself on the hue saturation. The hue saturation is a great little tool because it allows you to make any of your layer colors brighter. Whoops, I have, probably have something. There we go. Uh, it makes it like allows it to become brighter, changes the color. You can change the hue on it, all kinds of stuff. You can make it slightly, I can make it a little bit, little bit more red or a little bit more yellow or blue, however I want to do it. You can take it down to being very pale and dull, dark color. We can make it very vibrant. Or you can also make it completely dark, completely white, or somewhere along, shaded along that, you know, that um, spectrum. But for now, I like the red because we're going to do a lot of things to it and I don't want to change that color until I'm fully done with a design and ready to say I need to tweak it one way or the other. So we've made, so going back we have now duplicated that and made this shadow layer. And then all we have to do is just drag the shadow layer down just ever so slightly, ever so slightly to exist in a separate space. And it looks like I've got a little bit of a, like oh I don't know how to make a circle but that's fine. And then all we got to do is make it just a little bit l larger so that it actually looks like it came, it's, it's casting a shadow from the original thing. So there we go. Like just slightly tweak it however you want to do, however you think that that light is showing onto the design, onto that gem to make it look like that. And because it's a sh it's, it doesn't exist to block out all of the light, it's just going to block some of the light because light seeps in from everywhere. This is just taking away some of that light. We can then take away some of the opacity of that layer and take it to about here. Now we can still see that color underneath it and we can make this shadow be as bright or as dark as we want to and still show color underneath it. So there you see we can have like you know the sun is setting the sun is rising there you go that's how that that's how that all works and it's very cool. Okay takes care of the shadow. Now Let's put some let's put some shadow let's put some real shadow on this sucker. So as you can see here, I have I haven't turned on this layer yet. It's called the inner circle shadow. This is what it looks like. See how cool that is? It kind of has like a little bit deeper color in their center, but as it gets out, it gets, becomes darker. It shows like there's a solid matter there. That if you're looking down at that gem, that humped up marble gem. It's really deep in the center, but as it refracts around the bends, it gets darker. It's like the, when you know the, the curvature of the Earth and how the color of the of the sky changes. But how do you do such a thing? How do you make that happen? How do we make this? Because if you're trying to color this in pixels, you'd have to sit there and say, okay, um, the million pixels that are in the center are the bright red. The million of pixels that are around this, you know, certain degree of of, of the circle, that needs to be a slightly darker color, and you just work your way up. We're not going to get that crazy. We're not going to get that crazy. There's a very simple way. It's called a gradient. The shortcut key is a G in paint.net, but it's a gradient. But there are different types of gradients that you can apply. One being uh, left to right, linear. There's reflected, which is if from the middle, it reflects out like a mirror back, you know, to either side. You can also do stuff like a diamond pattern or a, a radial pattern or a conical, like it's a, 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 you're looking down on a cone. Uh, and then there's spur, uh, spirals, you know, clockwise or counterclockwise. You can also, and that's that's how you do, say, like a, um, a light to a darker version of red. Like, oh, I want to do like a yellow and a red and have like a, 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 a cast between like a rainbow effect between the two colors. Just like a deeper red to yellow and then fill in the gap between it, just ever slightly changing from one to the other. But we don't want to do that. We want to take and, and make it like uh, transparency. We want to cover some of that. There's transparency mode and there's color mode. Now, transparency mode is great if you want to make this disappear and you have nothing behind it. We want to still see something behind it, but we want to be able to say that it is black at the edges and lighter in the center. So what we're going to do is take our magic lasso or magic wand tool and go to our inner circle because that's where we're going to work. And we have the opacity so that, or the um, tolerance set so that it extends beyond that so that our shadow itself will extend all the way to the edge and just slightly into the background of the black outer circle. And we want to make sure that we take our layer. Whoops, I actually had him in the wrong spot. We want to take our layer and put it right below that. 
And let's get rid of that one so we don't see what we were already done. We want to see everything we're doing now. So here we have our primary and our secondary color, which is black, usually black and white. Sometimes you can, you know, other colors, you can switch back and forth if you're toggling and, and working on different colors. And we have this medicine dropper that picks the color either from the screen itself. So if I were to say, oh, I want that to be red, I have to be on the red layer to do it. You can see it just made it red. But if I'm on a, if I'm on a layer that has no color, it'll show this, this have like a like shadow. It's it basically is telling you that there's no color there. But we want it to be black because we want that black to be the primary shadow, but the secondary color is going to be nothing. So that everywhere that it's the secondary color on that gradient, it's not showing any color at all. So now we're going to do a contrast between one end of our, our gradient be, and then the center actually of this design to the outside of the design being center will be the secondary color and the outside will be the primary color and you'll see it go from black to clear and that's how we're going to get that done so i'm going to go all the way to the center point of this design which is six and six because it's a 12 by 12 canvas and i'm going to just plop my crosshair right there on the six and the six and put that down and now we're going to go all the way out and it would help if i would have actually turned on the layer so you can see what we're talking about Now, I did it backwards. Primary color has to be empty, and the secondary color has to be the... Well, let's try that again. Okay. So I'm going to take it all the way to the crosshairs, right to the center. Six and six, because it's a 12 by 12 canvas. And then you can see, as we start to drag it out and make it bigger, the concentration of clear versus black gets ever so slightly... ever so slightly out there that. The opacity, if I take it all the way up, because we, we, we wanna, we're also going to make it a little bit less opaque. But there you go. We can take it all the way in. The six is the middle. We can make it as deep color if we want to. I want to take it to about, I'm going to take it to the edge of that circle, kind of. And it can be anywhere along this line. It's going to be uniform because it's a spiral. Or, I'm um, sorry, it's a circle. Or, uh, I'm sorry, they call it radial, but you know, you know what I mean. So there we go. Now, that's if that's too dark, but we like the, the, the depth and the color of it, we can take the opacity down and just make it a little bit too. Boom. There you go. Look at that. I like it too dark. I like that. That, I kind of like that, but it doesn't give enough contrast between the outer rim of that and the, the black circle behind it. So we're going to take it to about mm, 150-ish. So now we've got that. We still need some sort of a depth to show um, to show more depth. We still need something, an, another element to show more depth. And that's going to be this circle highlight. And all I've done is taken and just made some eh, markings with white white color. Just just the line. Let's see here. Let's get you. We can, we can, now that we're done with that, we can go to this. This line here, whoops, this line here. You see how I have, how, how big I have it? You can make it as big as small as you want to, and you can make it uh, this little thick there, and then we'll take the paint bucket and fill it in, and then we'll make that. So now we have these little things, just like on the other side of this, we have it on that side. All right, let's get rid of this so we don't have that in front of us. We only see what we want to see. Now, if I was doing anime, you have this very flat 2D drawing with um, the you know the lights and the darks. That's how this would be done. We, we, we would we would just say, okay, that's that's our shadow. That's it. But we want to do we want to make it look like it's not white light, but it's reflection. It's reflecting light, and we're seeing the color brighten through it. So again, all we're going to do is take down the opacity. So it's not white. It's that red color. It is just a little bit of a highlight to it, just reflecting light from different, you know, different sides. And there you go. There you go. That's all that. That's all there is to it. We've got our circle. We've got our words. We've got our shadows. We've got our highlights. That's all it takes. That one element. That one element was 
what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight layers, because this is the additional one we don't need. Eight layers for that one element. But the great thing about it is I can make the same thing and just duplicate it and flip it over to the horizontal and I can do the other side just the same way. Change the change the, the background color and just change the wording and it's this and I don't have to do any additional stuff and I usually do that I usually do some symmetry so I can just flip them and have two sides of the same thing and do it one time I only ever have to do half a design I can then just make it <laughs> a mirror image and there you go so that's the basics and again people put a lot of effort into their work and I have gone from putting in very minimal effort to doing these designs to hours upon hours just on individual elements um, there's a design I did called you know this is fine which is a 20-sided uh, die that is being attacked from all sides it's on fire it's on a background it's got all kinds of stuff and I actually have probably about 100 layers on that because every little individual element each each weapon that was going into the die had a different color you know the the shadow the light the handle the the blade everything else those all became individual layers and there was a lot of hours racked up on that and your designers that are out there putting making t-shirts if they're doing good work they're putting in tons of hours and they deserve they deserve the praise that they do uh, and you supporting them as small business owners is a great way to show how much you like it. So if you want to, you can buy the brick on Tee Public and Redbubble. I will put the links in the description of the video itself. And you can have it for yourself. You can have it on a sticker. You can have it on a, a phone case. You can have it on a mug. You can have it on a shirt. You can have it on a magnet. Anything like that you like. It's great for anything. And or if you like what you see and you want to see me do more uh, tips and tricks on how to do some of the elements that I've done, buy me a coffee, show me, you know, become a Patreon fan, stuff like that. That'll help let me know that I, I should devote more time to, to showing you how to do this stuff. So there you have it. We've just done one small element of this entire design. I got three hexes, you know, three hexes the same type of way. I've got these individual bar, the brick itself, the shadow and the clouds, the same concepts used again and again. Shadow and light on this one, on the scroll, the little mousetrap here, all this little stuff. This entire back card has a gradient attached to it because it goes from lighter gray to darker gray. That's how that works. So there you go we've shown you how to do it you can go out there and you can test yourself again paint.net it's getpaint.net as the website I'll put the link to it in the description everything you want to know um, you can find the the plugins out there some great stuff it's it's all good in the hood out there um, again not enough can be said about designers and, and the work that they do uh, it's, and, and, and if you don't even have uh, like a Photoshop or paint.net or anything like that People who draw these by hand that do them by color by you know pencil and, and do that work they put a lot of hours in and they deserve the accolades and the praise that they do so support designers in that way um, again thanks again for watching I appreciate all your your support and I hope to see some sales and see some fans and see some more videos to be put out uh, but until then you have a good time uh, you have a good day take care of each other take care of the planet we'll talk to you next time have a good one bye bye